Mr. Cosby's World presents Understanding Light as a Wave. Hello everyone, this is Mr. Cosby, and we're going to talk about light as a wave. And the importance of talking about light as a wave is so that we can understand where the Bohr model uh, came from. Bohr took the Rutherford model and combined it with the information that came from the quantum theory and the work by Albert Einstein and Max Planck. And so we're going to look at uh, understanding light as a wave, and then we're going to look at light as a particle in a future video, and bring these together and try and understand the planetary or Bohr model. So everyone, uh, sit back and uh, get ready to take some notes. Let's start off with what is light. Light is electromagnetic radiation or EMR. Light is all the things that are around you that are traveling in electromagnetic uh, waves. And that could be AM and FM. That could be microwaves, infrared, visible light, of course, which is the light that was first studied by uh, Newton. Ultraviolet light, X-rays. There's also gamma rays. And all this light makes up the whole spectrum of e electromagnetic radiation. All right. Now, light was first studied back in the 1600s. It was an area called optics. And Newton and Huygens and Hooke and Hubble, a lot of these scientists were interested in light and its peculiarities. And Newton, of course, realized you could take and refract light into its different waves discovered the uh, light spectrum for visible light. Sir Isaac Newton uh, suggested light was a stream of particles, but he called uh, the little particles corpuscles, and that's what he thought light was. He thought they were pr probably these little streams of particles, but another man by the name of Christian Huygens, he uh, thought different. He suggested light was a wave. And since it was much easier to show that light had wave properties, the people at the time, the members of the Royal Societies and the educated people at the time thought Christian Huygens was probably right and that Newton was wrong in his beliefs. Today we know that they were both right. So let's look at light as a wave if that's the case. And James Clerk Maxwell came later and he developed four equations that showed light to be a wave. This showed that Huygens was correct, light must be a wave, because mathematically, we can show that light is a wave. Here's a look at his four equations. Most of you probably would not understand the work behind this, but there's his equations. I thought I would include them in there, just give you something to, to look at, be a little bit impressed by James Clerk Maxwell. But what do you need to know about light? Well, first you need to know what an electromagnetic wave is. And it is composed of an electric wave and a magnetic wave traveling at right angles to each other. And now what you want to do, I want you to watch very closely because what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a wave perpendicular and then I'm going to show you a wave uh, parallel and then I'm going to show you the two together. So uh, watch this very carefully. And here's the other one and here they are together. Isn't that cool? And this is what we think the wave is. As a matter of fact, we think it's probably going at the right angles here and then also kind of rotating as it's traveling through uh, space. It's a pretty cool idea. You can back that up and watch it again if you need to. An electromagnetic wave does not need any medium to travel through. It doesn't need a substance. Sound waves need something to pass through. A liquid or a gas. Our atmosphere sound travels from one person to the other through our atmosphere which is a gas. A sound can travel through water and it can travel through solid objects very easily. And we also know that uh, seismic waves also need to be able to travel through things. And uh, ocean waves and all these other kind of waves need a substance to go through. But electromagnetic waves or EMR, electromagnetic radiation, doesn't require any medium or substance. It can travel, it can travel basically through a vacuum, just like our sunlight travels from the sun to the earth through space, and space, of course, we know is a vacuum. So that's pretty cool. The speed of light. 
You need to know what the speed of light is, so write this down. Make sure that you make a flash card or get it in your notes. But you need to know that the speed of light is 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Now that's about 186,000 miles per second. Wow. Let me give you something to think about. That's like standing at the equator and traveling around the earth in about seven and a half times in a second. So we see that the speed of light is quite fast. Now let's talk about how a wave is made or the labeling of a wave. Now that line that I have going right down through the middle, you'll notice that line is imaginary. And it's there for reference when we label things. But one of the first things we need to know the maximum and the minimum. We call the maximum the crest and we call the minimum the trough. Now if you have a set of notes in front of you or you have my notes in front of you, there's a space on there where you can go and label uh, some waves. And you can uh, label a, I believe there's on there a short wave and a long wave. And you can uh, label the crest and the troughs and the other things that we're going to do here. Also, we need to know what the amplitude is. And the amplitude is the distance from, or half the distance from the maximum to the minimum. So each one of those that I just showed there, that's an amplitude. One is an amplitude with the crest and the other one's the amplitude on the trough. But it's half the distance between the maximum and minimum and we just need to know that. And this is just mostly for our ability to understand how a wave is put together. And when we talk about waves, we know what people are talking about. When you get to your pre-calculus class, your algebra 2 class, you'll work with sine waves and cosine waves. And you'll learn a lot more about amplitude and frequency and things of that nature mathematically. All right. We also want to look at the wavelength. Now, that's important to us because wavelengths have a lot to do with the energy and the frequency of a wave, and especially electromagnetic waves. So wavelengths are measured just like these red lines. All three of those are the same wavelength. It can be from crest to crest, trough to trough, or any corresponding part on one crest or trough to a corresponding part on another one. Frequency. Frequency is the number of cycles that pass through a point in a certain amount of time. So we take and we look at a cycle, and the number of cycles that pass through any point, we pick a point in space, and we imagine how many cycles can pass through that point in a certain amount of time, and that is a frequency. Now frequency can be used in mathematics, it can be used in statistics, it's used in a lot of other places uh, with the same definition. It's just the number of cycles and a cycle is predetermined or predefined and for us in talking about electromagnetic waves the picture there shows you what a cycle is, any crest or trough, and when it passes through a, at a certain amount of time that's frequency. And we call the units for frequency, uh, one cycle per second. So for us in electromagnetic radiation, it's one cycle per second. You might be doing some kind of other experiment or work in mathematics and your frequency might be 10 cars per hour. That could still be a frequency, a certain cycle, the car being the cycle, and the time uh, being an hour in this case. So one cycle per Second, frequency versus wavelength. Frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional, which means then that frequency is going to increase and wavelength is going to decrease, or wavelength is going to increase and frequency is going to decrease. So let's take a look at it. Short wavelength, high frequency. Long wavelength, low frequency, inversely proportional. Frequency times wavelength is the speed of light. And that's true for any wave, and especially any electromagnetic wave. The frequency times the wavelength will be the speed of that wave. And in this case, it's the speed of light. Now you want to write that down. And note that in your notes, I wrote it in a different way. It's still mathematically the same equation. If you have any questions, just send me an email at mrkazi at mrkazi.com and be sure to check out my website at mrkazi.com if you want to see more videos. Have a great day and happy ions.